We also hear yesterday that up to 54,000 migrants, because I'm going to keep going on this, who entered the UK illegally, underlined illegally, to get new rights, oh God, uh, to live in Britain after Dishy Rishi, I call him idiotic Sunak, ditched a key part of Priti Patel's flagship immigration law. The move, announced yesterday by uh, Immigration Minister Robert Jenrick, is part of an attempt part of an attempt even, to clear a backlog of 137,000 asylum applications, as well as the £6 million a day it costs to house them. Uh, apparently, overnight, Labour have announced that under Sunak's watch, and this is about the only useful thing Labour has said for ages, the taxpayer has footed a bit of £1.5 billion. £1.5 billion. Joining me to discuss a lot of things, Government Minister and London Mayoral hopeful, so we love him, Paul Scully MP, good morning. Morning to you. How are you, Jeremy? Can I just say one thing? I will do everything in my power to help you get rid of that ridiculous human being in London. Good luck well, to you. Well, that's very kind of you, Jeremy. Honestly. I mean, look, I've worked at him, uh, with him at close quarters as Minister for London, and it's the growing frustration that I've had about seeing him do absolutely everything else take, apart from doing on his job. Take, that's what's a, take a black cab across the city you want to represent and ask every single cabbie, male and female, how he has utterly screwed their lives up. Ridiculous. Paul, um, I know you're a government minister. I know I'm irate about this. We'll start as we've started all morning, which is... Those horrors yesterday in Annecy, everybody quite rightly appalled. It's speculation as to whether this is radicalisation, whether it's mental illness, whether his ex-wife had stopped him from seeing his kid. What it has done is inflamed tension and debate about this whole migrant situation, Paul, and this appalling ability for millions of people across Europe to go wherever without any papers, willy-nilly, and then we hear... Uh, that Richie Sunak has decided to ditch this part of Priti Patel's government uh, ba uh, uh, bill and allow allow 54,000 migrants better privileges. Do you understand, as a government minister, the sheer, and I mean sheer frustration, of the British people who are struggling and are going, why don't I just get in a boat and arrive here and get put in a hotel because then I won't be skinned? Because that's what people think, Paul. They do. Yeah. No, Jeremy, I mean, you. I heard a little bit what you were saying before. You were saying about how we weren't able to talk about immigration uh, freely for a number of uh, years, and that's what's caused so much of the frustration. You then had the Brexit vote, partly it was uh, so we could have a uh, better managed, better controlled immigration, not stopping immigration, but just having it controlled properly. And we're really now at the point when we're... Um, that didn't want when we're trying to it's it's the stock and flow we've got to stop people coming in the pull factors that are dragging people into this country what are the pull factors the pull factors well, are presumably so with the greatest of respect what about those what about those um those migrants in the boat two weeks ago i nearly lost my head on the television when they told me this the french boat comes up alongside no thank you we want to and they wait for the british boat that's what i'm saying to explain that to british people who are struggling is 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 a joke it is. It is. And that's why we've got to stop the small boats coming uh, in the first place. And that's why, you know, we, we still have the Rwanda process that's going through that, that uh, uh, the courts, the legislation, so that when it starts and we can stay, take people to Rwanda, it won't be London, it won't be Bradford, it won't be Birmingham that, or, or Scampton that they're going to. They will be going to Rwanda. Now, I've been to Uganda, actually, when I was um, sh looking at what DFID were doing over there. And it's a similar process to their to to uh, how they deal with their refugees. It, they, they're tre they're treated well, but they're not going to have this sort of golden goose that they expect. That's going to be laying the golden egg uh, of, of sort of um, you know the economy in the UK, which is pulling them in because they know they can actually uh, so, you know we have a free open country. So so let let's just let's not get into a debate about Rwanda. It would be fair to say that your government, in fact, most governments have simply it seems lost the war on illegal immigration. This is what I don't get, right? And I would be further to the right than you. In 2010, before the, le before the Tory party came to power, uh, the processing, the applications for processing were happening in a far more efficient way. What I don't understand is when, when all of these politicians say we want to, you know, we want to stop the boats, we want to stop the... Why, why does somebody not, seriously, instead of bringing a bill, sit down and go, the Home Office, by the way, doesn't work, our processing systems don't work, we've got civil servants in the Home Office who think it's their right, under their union, to go to, 
to go to court and take an elected government's policy to court. What I don't understand, Paul, how this is allowed to happen. I don't understand why there hasn't been more foresight. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Well, two, two things. I think what you were seeing from the Home Secretary and you're seeing from the Prime Minister, actually, they are pushing back at, to the, the inertia about the pushback that we're getting uh, for putting these um, fair and proportionate policies into place. I would take issue with what you said about the Home Office working better before 2010. We actually took over a quarter of a million uh, backlog of what they what they're called legacy cases at the moment because actually what the home office has done they just shoved these quarter million on, on the back burner and ignored them for like literally two or three years whilst they were dealing with all the fresh t- stuff coming through so this has been something that we've been trying to wade through for more than a decade now and it's got worse because of the small boat phenomenon that's that we've just got absolutely got to get on top of what do you think is the answer i mean a lot of people will say when i talk to them um there's a headline, I want to stop the boats. Yesterday, or two, two days ago, Sunak was down in Doe, or Kent, I think, and saying 20% down here, 30% up. Yeah, the weather's better. Wait till it turns. I'm not, I'm not dissing him. We all want this sorted. I'm talking about the frustration. We're two years maximum away from a general election. I categorically believe that this will be one of the number one situations yeah. that people are concerned about. By the way, I don't think Labour's got a policy. I think Labour, um, I mean, overnight, they've just cancelled their 28 billion green uh, policy. I mean, it, Rachel Reeves this morning, I don't know if you heard the breaking news an hour ago. We're not doing that, no. No, because you found out it's going to cost average people a £1,000 and it doesn't work out financially because what you promise and what you have to pay for are two different things. I just want a politician to say to me, we're going to have to do this, especially that because this is beginning to impact on ordinary working class people who will tell you 10 to a penny this country's broken that's what the Tory party needs to get hold of isn't it you what look you asked the question what do we do about this so the the legislation that goes through cuts through all of the sort of cottage industry that's built up around the court processes the appeals process we couldn't even get a plane off the ground uh, because of some of the legal challenges when we had some known hardened criminals on that on that plane and 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 that was supported that those appeals were supported by the labor party they absolutely not only don't have answers but they're going to exacerbate the problem um so we've got to cut those appeal processes so we can they can have a fair hearing but then once they've had that they don't keep coming back time and time and time again that's what's dragging people across the channel then to, to, to join their family, their friends, who have managed to play the system. That's what we've got to cut out, and that's what we're going to do. Do you think we're seen as a soft option? I think for some, yes. Um, you know, I'm also putting through the online safety bill through Parliament at the moment. Natalie Elphick, the Dover MP, has rightly been pushing me to go further, which we're doing, uh, so that we can actually really get on top of the TikTok advertising and the uh, social media advertising, uh, because they struggle to, to uh, the platforms even struggle to cut it out, where they're just openly advertising their illegal activities, saying, come over, we've got, you know, they're treating it as a, a normal economic transaction. It's Shall I read stop. you something from... I believe a Tory voter, Dave in Kent, who is... Con- I mean, this this is... And when people say to me, come on, rhetoric, Jez. Jez, it's much more serious than people think. The UK is broken, in my opinion, and fast losing the support of decent, ordinary, working-class be- people. I was born in Fulham in 1953 and no longer bleat on about the unfairness meted out to the English people. I've turned my back because I am fed up of believing that anybody can make real change. For me, in his text, is the absolute heartbeat of the next election. Starmer and his cronies can go on about, we'll make it better. I believe that the Tory party needs to move a little bit further to the right and needs to reconnect with ordinary working class people. But I'll say one thing about you, my friend, because we've spoken before. I, I, I promise what I said, whatever support this station could get, because that man needs to be taken out of London and Paul Scully needs to win. We appreciate you being on this morning. Thank you very much. Indeed.